I was thinking about the general idea of an immersive virtual world where you could make stuff, which was really the thing that was so mm -hmm. uh, appealing to me, was the idea of making stuff. So not the idea of broadcasting stuff, but the idea of people building things, potentially building things together, which is all oh, collaborative. Today. Okay. Yeah. So that was that was the thing that, that, that interested me yeah. as a creative kind of a, mm -hmm. you know, computer designer guy, uh, you know, programming kid. Uh, so the... The, the, the GeForce 2 came out uh, and had good enough graphics to do it. The other thing that had happened, and I had seen this at Real Networks, was uh, broadband. Um, and broadband in 99, you could kind of tell that it was going to be game over. That, that, yeah, that yeah. everybody was going to have broadband. Certainly they didn't in 99. It exactly. was still like 7%. You know, but once you experienced the first time, you knew it would never go back. Yeah, you knew people would. You know, it was so much easier. Mm -hmm. You could leave it on all the time, which I think was... Probably the big feature that people forget about now is simply that now our internet connections never, we don't have to dial up. There's no delay in initial session establishment. Well, the kids in school don't know about a dial up and all yeah. that crazy sound that we used to hear. To you know, there are connect. still people, there are still people that access Second Life with modems. Really? Second Life's a broad enough phenomenon in terms of who's using it that it's, it's amazing. It's is amazing. it because they're around the world or just a small percentage? It's because they're around the world and all different backgrounds and all different demographics and just everybody wow. you can imagine. Scene. But, but yeah, there's still people on dial-up. It's hilarious. Like we used to have things in Second Life where we'd have to make sure that if you were on dial-up, it didn't slow down the experience for everybody else. Because it turns it, it turns out that the way uh, Second Life and most systems like this will be built, mm -hmm. um, it, it, you actually if you're the if you're running really slowly, it actually sort of can, can slow down everything for everybody else that's standing near you that. in the virtual world. Okay. I actually signed on about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. ago. Um, I didn't get that far. I got into the vehicles, I got into a few locations, mm -hmm. I tried on a couple of outfits, and, gave up. Uh, and no, I gave up. But then again, yeah. I'm expecting you to tell me today that it may be just a little bit easier to use than I at first experienced It's it. easier now, although the question mm -hmm. for you as a busy person who's, yeah. who's, who's working all the time is whether there is enough utility yet there to pull you in. I mean, one of the things I, I laugh about all the time is people say, well, you, you guys have to. Second Life's not going to get really, really, really big until you guys make it easy to use. Now, sometimes I think that that's a little bit like if you had said this this browser thing mm -hmm. in '94. You know, it's not really going to get big until it's until this whole thing is way. You know, the search and everything needs to be a lot easier Just to like do. Just like radio, when they had to dial it but, in, it was so tough to do. But what happened? What's what's what happened? I think at least with the internet, and I, I love this, is that if you remember like when you finally got like an email address, now of course you, you had an email address a long time, but uh, when a lot of people finally got their email address was like 98, 97. And the, the reason why is simply because they couldn't do without it because people were giving them business cards, you know, and saying, I'll email you. Yeah. And they just at some point said, uh, I gotta got, do it. I gotta I got get an account. And mm -hmm. I actually think that big, uh, phenomenological uh, trends mm -hmm. in technology usage often sort of follow that pattern where it isn't really a matter of pitching it or selling it or making it easy. Now certainly, like with Second Life, our job as a company is to do that and, and in a competitive market, you know, as time goes by, to do that as, as best we can. Yeah. But I actually think that the, the, the sort of ease of use of it will be one factor, but maybe the bigger factor will simply be that everyone else is there at some point. And, you know, for example, a big thing in Second Life today, and I'll talk about this on stage, is um, having meetings. And once it gets to the point where somebody just demands and says, well, Peggy, I won't meet with you. You can interview me, but you, you have to interview me in Second Life because my, you know, my, my, my publicist is standing next to me. You're the only person just that we can't see in the whole video conference. Don't you feel like you shouldn't be here? You know? Exactly. So I, I think that uh, I think that's going to be a, 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 something we're going to see happen is that if virtual worlds become as successful as I think they will, it, it'll just be one of those, like, it's just part of the background. You don't really have a choice. It's not like, a, well, I finally got into virtual worlds because it was so cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we are doing good things as a company to make it cooler. It, it is a lot more enjoyable and easier to get into now than it was a year and a half ago. Yeah. Although part of the barriers are still just technology adoption. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, laptops, for example, are something that when I started the company, I started the company in 99. And if you think about it, if you remember, uh, laptops weren't 
a big idea in '99. Yeah. They were they were kind of a weird. Some people needed them. You, they, they didn't they didn't connect to the internet. That's right. There were these things, and so what expensive. happened in 2001? Yeah, a mm-hmm. lot more expensive. 2001, what happened? Which which I remember looking at and saying, oh, uh oh, was uh, the laptops, uh, uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah. In 2001, That's about right. Wi-Fi took off, mm-hmm. and so everybody said, I'm not using a desktop anymore. I'm just going to get a laptop. Mm-hmm. And, and so that was a big problem because uh, the laptops don't have the graphics capabilities mm-hmm. that the desktops did. Mm-hmm. And so we sort of had this setback at Linden Lab where we were working on Second Life and then everybody would come to our office and say, yeah, let me see it on my laptop. And we'd say, well, it doesn't work on your laptop. So we had to wait for that. I, I can remember the first laptop that came out, it was a, I think it was a Toshiba, that had a, a GeForce graphics card in it. And I mean, we had one of these things and we treated it like... You know, we packed it in plastic, you know, it was like a shrine object, you know, because we could take it and do a demonstration exactly. of Second Life, mm-hmm. which, it, which in those days was Linden World, uh, without needing to bring a desktop around. Wow. 